In this video, let's understand what is data modeling, how to do data modeling or semantic modeling using Power BI, how to set up a star schema in Power BI. One of the crucial and vital aspects of working within a business intelligence platform like Power BI is setting up your data correctly. And this step is called data modeling. To understand this better, let's take a look at sample data of a fictional chocolate company called Awesome Chocolates. We have used a little bit of this in the previous video where we just looked at shipments data and analyzed it. Here in this Excel file, I have got sample data for our Awesome Chocolates company. The data itself is broken into multiple tables because this is usually how these kind of data sets are maintained in real world. So here I have got a shipments table. Each row is one shipment and it talks about the unique identification number for the shipment. What is the salesperson ID number? What is the product ID number? What is the geographical ID number? What is the date on which that shipment happened? How much was the amount boxes and what is the order status? If I want to know more about this particular shipment, for example, who is the salesperson responsible for it or what is the product? I need to go into these other tables. So here I have got a product table. For example, P01 is the milk bars product. Likewise, here I have got my salesperson table where SP01 corresponds to bar phony. Likewise, if I want to know more about the date itself, I can go into the calendar table, locate the relevant date and then find out what is the name of the month and what kind of day it is. Is it a Monday, Tuesday or Friday? And this is normally how the data looks like in a business intelligence system. It's just that the data may not actually lie in an Excel file. It might actually be sitting in a SQL server, MySQL or on the cloud. No matter where the data is, the key component or key aspect of these kind of data sets is there is never one table. Let's take a closer look at this chocolate data set. I'm going to make a sketch here of how our data looks. We have got four or five different tables. So we have got the shipments table. We have got product table. We also have people table, locations table and calendar table. Each table is one box and I'm going to just say this is my shipments table, product, people, location and calendar. Even though the data is there in all the tables, there are some special kinds of tables. So for example, the shipment table, it doesn't really contain any actual information. All it contains is pointers to other tables. It does record actually what happened. But if I want to know what kind of product it is or what is the team name of the person who did, who did that shipping, I won't get that answers here. So this kind of a table where you have some information but pointers to other tables is called a fact table. And these other tables, the product table, people table, location tables and calendar table, and these are called dimension tables. This is because each table here explains one dimension of data. So for example, the product dimension table here tells me what is happening from the perspective of the product. There is a special kind of a dimension table in business intelligence reporting and that is called calendar table because this talks particularly about date or time component of analysis. And having a calendar table is vital if you want to do any kind of time series analysis trend analysis or forecasting in your BI reporting. Given these five tables, naturally there are some linkages between them. For example, we could imagine the shipment table and the product table are connected by an invisible thread so that we can follow that thread to know more about a specific product. What kind of a relationship or line this is? Each of our products that we sell, there is going to be one line in the products table. For example, imagine P01, it only appears once in the product dimension, but the actual shipment table, the fact table can have multiple records or multiple rows that point to the same P01. So the nature of this relationship is called many. This is indicated by star in many database diagrams or in BI models to one relationship. 
So this is called many to one, usually denoted by star and one. We could imagine a similar thread connecting all of these tables and usually in about 99% of the cases, these relationships will all be many to one. And the way this works is the many side is usually on the fact and the one side is on the dimension. Another handy way of thinking about this is that dimension is the owner of that information. So product information is owned by the product dimension table. Date information is owned by calendar table. Location information is owned by the locations table. Another handy clue, and this is really important when it comes to understanding and implementing a proper date model, is to look at the nature of these tables. The fact table could usually contain millions or billions of records, depending on what kind of business it is and how big the operations are. For example, in case of our awesome chocolates business, we have got around 7000 records in this data set that I'm providing to you. So even a simple chocolate company has 7000 shipments in the span of less than two years. But how many products do we have? We only have about 22 products and 25 people. So usually, again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but usually you will find that the fact table is a really long or a tall table. Whereas the dimension table is a really short table because it has fewer rows in comparison with fact. Like I said, this is not a hard and fast rule. For example, if you were to launch e-commerce website to rival Amazon, now, if you go to Amazon, you, I'm pretty sure there are millions of products there. And if you want to compete with Amazon, when you initially launch the website, you should also have a million products. So your dimension table on the product level might have a million rows, but your actual order table or shipment table may not have much because you just started the business. So your fact table might only have 300 rows, even though you have got a million products. But the fact tables are engineered and designed to hold lots and lots of information. So potentially billions of rows or even trillions of rows if you're looking at some really large corporations. So the handy clue here is a fact table is something that has many records and a dimension table usually has fewer records in comparison. Another thing that you can keep in mind when you're looking at these tables is the fact table also usually has just a few columns. It doesn't really have 300 columns or 9,000 columns. It might just have half a dozen or a dozen columns, depending on again, how big and how complicated the data model is. So one handy way of thinking about fact tables is these are tall and narrow tables. Tall because they have lots of rows, narrow because they just have a few columns. On the other hand, a dimension table is a short and fat table. It has fewer rows, but many, many columns. A product might have 300 attributes attached to it. What is the name of the product, category of the product, original launch date of the product, version, manager, image, you know, lots of information. So whatever is there, all of that gets piled into the dimension table. This kind of a model where you have got one central fact and multiple dimensions all connected is called star schema. Why? Because if you look at a star, it kind of has the same behavior. It has got a central concept and a lot of smaller outer concepts. So that's why this is called star because it kind of looks like a star. I mean, this picture doesn't look like a star. It kind of looks like an octopus, but you get the idea. So this particular kind of a data model is called star schema. In the process of getting all of this data and setting up this data model is usually called as data modeling or semantic modeling in the context of Power BI. So our next step is now that we have got all the theoretical background of what this is and how it looks, let's go ahead and implement this particular semantic or star schema into Power BI using the sample data file. A link to the sample data file will be available in the video description. In order to set up the star schema or data model here, we need to first bring in the data. So I have opened a brand new Power BI workbook and I'm going to click on import data from Excel. And let me grab the file. This file is available in the video description. 
and it is one excel file but it has all the data again a note of caution here in many real world situations you will not have all of this data neatly available in one file you may have to connect to different systems to get different parts of the puzzle so for example the shipment data might be available in your sap whereas a product dimension might available in your website and a sales employee type table might be available in your crm system like that or there might even be a warehouse that is being maintained with all of this data neatly structured for you so whatever is the source of the thing you'll need to connect and bring the data sometimes multiple different connections need to be made in our case it is a learning session so i have put everything into one excel file so here all the tables will be shown we need to select all of these tables ignore these worksheets because we don't need to bring the sheets themselves we just want to get the tables so i'm going to select all of these five tables and you can select the thing here to see a preview of the data it all looks all right to me so i'm not gonna go into power query to make any transformations but if you want to do that click on transform data and jump into power query to clean up the data or add any extra columns you want i've got other videos about power query in my channel as well as in the courses so feel free to check them out i'll click on the load button here and here itself you can see that power query is saying it is loading the data to the model it is already trying to build the model as the data comes in but we'll actually take control of this and look at the model and define the model better ourselves so all the tables are now loaded you can see that they appear in the data tab here and all my five tables are there the first step to set up our semantic or data model is to go into the model view button here from report view once you are here you'll see that power bi tried to actually connect the tables itself and try to create a star schema it hasn't succeeded because it has only connected three of the tables it hasn't connected the calendar table this is because power bi uses some simple thumb rules if the column names and the contents match then it will automatically connect the tables here let me first uh, finish the connecting everything and then i'll explain how the model is set up and what is what so as you can see the shipments is connected to locations people and products i'm gonna connect this to calendar as well to do that we are going to take the ship date which is the date column and drag and drop it on the cal underscore date field which is my date column in the calendar table this is going to ask you whether the columns that you want to connect are this and it will automatically highlight uh, the ship date column up top as well as cal date column here it will also tell you what is the cardinality of the relationship cardinality is the technical term for the nature of this relationship is it many to one or not uh, and in this case you can see shipments and calendar it has a many to one relationship i'm happy with this so i'm going to click on save and now our relationship is built the shipments table is our fact table and all of these dimensions are neatly connected in this beautiful star schema now let's take a closer look at the schema i'm just going to expand this so we can see all the columns and if you point on any single line you can see what goes where so for example in the shipments i have got a pid column which corresponds to product id and that is linked up to pid in my products table you can double check all these relationships by either pointing to these things individually this is all right if you have got a small model with just five tables many times in real world bi situations you might have 50 different tables and doing this is a bit of a hassle so once you are in the model view you will also have access to many other features for example you'll have a manage relationships button here you'll also have a big data tab that kind of tells you a bit more about your semantic model so if you click on manage relationships you will see all the relationships that exist in your model and what is the nature of it here you can see that it is a many to one many to one many to one many to one and one side will be in the dimension and many side would be usually in the fact table you'll also see whether the relationship is active or not in our case all the four relationships are active but many times you might also have a inactive relationship depending on what else is there in your data uh, and you'll see that there is a auto detect button this basically uses some simple rules 
to automatically map tables for you and while you are here you can also make a new relationship should you have any other tables or fields that you want to connect up you can also see all of these relationships in the model view here if you go to the model and expand out the semantic model you'll see all the four relationships listed out here in the relationships area here this is particularly helpful if you are building a semantic model on the other kinds of platforms that connect to power bi for example if you're building it in fabric or uh, sql server analysis services or something you will be able to see all of that information here neatly one other aspect of these relationships is apart from the many and one symbol on the line there is also a arrow that usually goes from dimension to the fact this arrow is the filter propagation arrow what it is saying is if you were to filter the dimension then the fact gets filtered now this is a concept that is somewhat foreign and this is usually where most people get confused when they start using power bi in fact i got confused about this for almost a couple of years before i fully grasped it and understood it and started using it for my advantage so let me explain this a bit more by actually creating a visual and then you know we can connect the dots from there so now that the modeling part is done this bit is what we call as modeling usually despite sounding quite technical and complicated data modeling simply refers to the idea of bringing in all the tables laying them out and connecting the relationships between them that step is what we loosely referred to as data or semantic modeling there is more to it uh, creating measures creating role based access all of that is combined into semantic modeling but a um, big chunk of the process is actually getting here rest of it is depends on the actual reporting needs so let's go to the report view here and let's create a simple column chart to understand what's happening at a product level so i'll put a column chart and in here i want to see each product and what is the total amount that we are making so product is owned by the products table so i'm going to go to the products table and bring in product into x axis and then i'll go into my shipments table this is where all the numbers would be take the amount and put it in y axis so i'll get this nice little picture and now while looking at this i may want to see this information just for new zealand so i want to add a slicer we'll put this slicer right here and in this slicer go to locations and put the geo field here so we have got all these six geographies and i'm going to click on new zealand as soon as i click i'll see the information just for new zealand i'll know for example manuka honey chocolate is the most biggest selling product there 464000 dollars whereas 50% dark bites 42000 dollars now behind the scenes what is happening how do these numbers come up this is where in the model these arrows kind of tell me how all of this is happening so for the purpose of this particular analysis we are using the location table the product table and the shipment table so we are not really worried about what is here or there because we are not using that for that particular graph so you can ignore those two for for a moment internally what is happening is i have got a product so this column is on the graph and the amount is there but we also have a slicer that kind of limits the geo to new zealand so as soon as i click on new zealand the location table even though it has six rows it shrinks down to just new zealand row and because there is a relationship that is going from here to there and the filter direction is this way power bi well technically internally power pivot sees that oh this table is being filtered by the slicer but because the slicer needs to propagate the filter propagation says from here go there it just takes that one row and goes here takes the corresponding gid and limits the shipments just down to new zealand shipments at that point this shipment table doesn't contain all the 7000 shipments it only contains what happened in new zealand and then the products table comes into picture it says i want to know what is happening for manuka honey choco so for that product again this products table shrinks down to just that single product 
goes here, looks at the amount column, sums it up, prints that on the screen as a column. And that process repeats for all the 20 odd products that we have. So that's what these arrows do. They basically enforce the filtering from one table to another. And this is why the data modeling step is the most important one. If you don't model it correctly, or if, if you have mapped out incorrect fields or didn't bother connecting the tables, then nothing works on the screen. So for example, to show that I'm going to delete this relationship. Now the location and shipments are not connected. See here what happens. My New Zealand, even though it is selected, peanut butter cubes 3.7 million is the highest selling product and Manuka honey 3.495 million is the total value. So because it's not paying attention to this slicer anymore, I could click on anything. Nothing really happens on the screen because behind the scenes, there could not be any propagation happening to change these calculations. So this is why it is important to have the data modeling done and have the correct arrow direction there. Even if the arrow is going the other way around, technically you can't have the arrow going only the other way around um, with the way this data set is set up. Either if the there is no relationship or you map out the wrong fields or whatever, then this won't work. So now you can see as soon as I select New Zealand, I'll get their correct numbers. So this is the important aspect when it comes to data modeling and how behind scenes it all works. I hope this has given you a good understanding of how to set up the data model in Power BI. In the subsequent videos, we are going to look at how to use the data model and then how to build calculations using DAX and Power Pivot.